He, he, oh, Joe doesn't know about that, dude. So it's probably fake. If that's real, that might be okay. propaganda. You might, might get there. In the Come on, bro. This is, oh my God. The level of American exceptionalist copium that uh, motherfuckers are on is so crazy. Like there's certain metrics that you literally cannot fake. Okay. Like, can you imagine thinking that an entire country is just like, try like with North Korea, you could say some shit like that because there's so much, there's, there's so little travel happening in and out of North Korea. You literally cannot do that about China, man. It's fucking nuts. Like it's nuts to say that like this is happening in China. And then there are metrics that you cannot uh, fake, like your uh, the the growth in specific sectors, how much your economic recovery, how how much your economy is recovered. Like, it's so dumb. Fucking everybody's welded inside their homes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like who knows? Yeah. But I do know New Zealand, which has zero cases at all. Like Dan Hooker just fought on Fight Island, and he can't go home. He's from New Zealand. He can't go home until he's quarantined until February twenty first. So if that means maybe he if he goes home, he has to just sit tight and can't go anywhere and can't leave the house till February twenty first, where he goes outside. But they have like very strict quarantine laws when you get outside the country. I think they have that in America too, right? What is this? Oh yeah, this is Wuhan. Now. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, but is that real? Yeah, this, well, these pictures are this like a from the twenty a couple days ago. They do kind of have masks. Some of them. Is that even real? He says. Do mm. that one lady is like masks, right? she's she pulled out her mask to smell that dude. Look at her. Mm. <laughs> Hard to smell you. Wow, February 2020. Yeah. It's March, I guess. And here we are in 2021, and they're buck wild. Mm -hmm. So what what has happened? They've gone through, it's gone through the city. Do they they haven't been vaccinated, right? Do they have a vaccine? I wonder. Uh, I wonder if or if everyone just got it. I'll, I'll... It can't be the other thing, guys. Hey guys, you know there is one other thing that happened, but it cannot be that. And that is rigorous, aggressive lockdown measures to stop the further spread of coronavirus from uh, happening in the country. That can't be it. That is completely beyond the pale. So it is probably they vaccinated everybody, right? Or it's fake. Dude, look, you're, I'm literally watching someone have the, the wheels turn in front of their eyes to justify their worldview that like lockdown measures don't work it doesn't work here in America so it doesn't work anywhere obviously so it's impossible that that is the reason why they've been able to return to normalcy for a very long time it's just denial like he is denying and trying to cope with the reality that is in front of his eyes I'll look through and see if they have a conclusion in here Finally, people are accepting the idea that this might have come from a fucking lab. It's hilarious. I, I brought it up once with Brett Weinstein and, and some fucking ridiculous liberal smear website was saying that I'm promoting a dangerous conspiracy that it emanated from a lab. Like, the fucking lab is right there. That's not a conspiracy theory. The lab's right there. I mean, that's literally how conspiracy theories work, brother. Come on, dude. That's, that's literally how conspiracy theories work, man. That, that's, that's how it works. And I can't even shit on Joe Rogan too much for this because, like, the American State Department originally wanted to go along with that conspiracy theory. And a lot of mainstream media outlets also kind of lightly nudged on that conspiracy theory in the beginning. And then the scientific community came out and said that, nope, that's not what happened. We have ways of figuring out if the, this virus is man-made. And uh, that is not what has happened in the organic structure of this uh, virus. And it's been a fucking year. And this dude is still saying like, well, there's a lab there. Well, no shit, there's a lab there. Of course, there's a fucking lab there. It's a gigantic area with millions of people living there with a fucking virolo virolo virology institute. Of course. And there's one in fucking Georgia.
there. Like, it's not like there's, we're making up the fact that there's a level four lab right there. It's fucking right there. There's two labs there, by the way. Like, what are you talking about? Is that a dangerous conspiracy? Because they thought it was because of Trump. Because Trump, Trump. Motherfucker, it is a dangerous conspiracy because it's, you, you are going against the scientific consensus and claiming with no evidence whatsoever other than the fact that kind of like how flat earthers do it there's a there's a lab right there there's a level 4 lab right there okay which at the end of that conspiracy uh is is an implication that china somehow nefariously fucking spread this virus onto the planet Zan, I love you, dog, but you wrong on this one? Wait. Oh my god, and this is why it's a dangerous conspiracy, because I have fucking absolute baboons in my audience. Three-month subscribers and gifters on top of that that are just baboon-brained, okay? This does not mean anything, you dumb fuck. This is not proof that the fucking virus was built in a lab, you stupid moron. Why are there still people who are straight up fucking talking about idiotic articles that don't prove anything? From motherfucking April in 2020. In the argument, not that it was man-made, but that it was... First, the argument was that it was man-made. Then the argument was that it was in the lab and it was accidentally released. Neither of which... It's, it's both of which are speculative. Okay? And neither of which is true. There's also additional evidence that COVID might not have even fucking started in Wuhan anymore. That there were cases of fucking COVID... Uh, that there were cases of COVID previously found in fucking Europe. Far before what the fucking, uh, far before the, the, the first documented instance of COVID in fucking uh, Wuhan. I'm not saying that that's the case. As far as we know, it started off in Wuhan. And the working theory is a, a uh, relationship between a fucking pangolin and a bat. All right. Most likely in the uh, wet foods market. Viruses travel and mutate. That's why it's stupid to call them shit like China virus. I know, but it doesn't matter because it's the America virus now, ironically, and not the fucking China virus. No, there is no, like, fucking uh, of animals. It's just, like, if animals that are diseased that have, especially bats, that have a super fucking, that are, that, that run super warm, and they have, like, really weird uh, uh, immune systems, are diseased and uh, are around another animal that somehow gets that disease to jump from one to the other and it mutates and then again another separate uh, mutation to jump over to human beings and you have the uh, ggs chad i love you but this shit is sketchy that's all i'm saying love you dude dude don't say fucking i love you and then send me like an article that does not prove what you're trying to say like there's no it's not weird that a fucking epidemiologist was spending American dollars in an area that requires international cooperation from virologists in every fucking country, okay? You are doing, or what this article is doing, and what many conspiracy theorists do is look at something that is normal and try to f make it seem like it's nefarious or suspicious. This is, of course, how this works. Epidemiologists cooperate globally because that is how you're supposed to deal with pandemics. Okay? Of course they are going to be looking at bats in that fucking uh, uh, center of research as well because bats notoriously have insane immune systems that make them 
incredible fucking vectors of spreading mutated forms of the same disease to other animals. They travel, and they have crazy immune systems. Obviously, China was researching coronavirus after SARS. Nothing to see here. I mean, and also, coronavirus already was a problem with cattle, too. It's not like it was fucking new. Just saying, uh, I love you, but you're wrong on this one is not a good enough counter, and it's really fucking annoying and stupid. And it's frustrating to me in particular because this is something that I have... I've had to combat this kind of misinformation for a very long time and uh, almost the entirety of this past year. So having to relitigate... Having to relitigate some of the most idiotic fucking conspiracy theories that have been disproven time and time again is really frustrating and actually is a yet another testament to how much impact Joe Rogan has and other uh, bimbos like him have in spreading misinformation. Literally just educated and guess is not misinformation. Science, the science is not settled. It's an educated guess versus an uneducated guess. If you are saying it's really suspicious that there's a stage four virology lab in the middle of one of the most crowded fucking places where there are, uh, where there is uh, routinely like animals interacting with one another and potentially uh, hubs for, for new diseases. And that uh, international cooperation is a necessity amongst epidemiologists. And therefore, America is funding global programs all around the world, including this virology lab. And that is enough to be suspicious. Then that's not an educated guess. That is an uneducated guess. You do not understand how the normal protocol works. And this is the first time you have access to information. So it comes across as very weird to you. And all of a sudden, you're like, well, it is really weird. It's not weird. It's literally not weird. This is, of course, that's going to happen. There are these sorts of labs in Georgia. I think there's one in fucking Houston. I looked it up before. Like. Is this, is this like. Donald Trump's a weird fucking... Yeah, I don't give a fuck, dude. This is Donald Trump's Department of State, like... Donald Trump's State Department continuing the fucking conspiracy theories. This is why I say I don't even fault Joe Rogan all that much, because the Donald Trump's State Department is absolutely trying to... Uh, or did absolutely try to fucking lie. People clearly have no understanding of how hard it is to get even in a level one virology lab, let alone level four. The idea of a virus being broken out is almost certainly the word of a lunatic. Anyway, it's funny how chuds are quick to believe that China welded people into their homes and stuff like that. But as soon as they say positive things like the fact that they've opened up again, they can't believe it. Also claim to not understand how they could do it. The welding fucking shit is real. The Chinese government in certain areas, in certain fucking hotbeds, absolutely did weld certain exits to make sure that everyone was only leaving their apartments from one fucking doorway. Okay? They did. They welded doors shut in an effort to make sure that people were not leaving apartments from 11 different exits, and it was only one exit that they were leaving the apartment from. So, And it fucking worked! It literally worked! They weren't welding people into their apartments to murder them in the way that Americans try to, uh, in the, in the way that Americans are trying to fucking make it seem like they weren't like, sorry, we're welding you into your apartment and you're going to fucking die now. Like, that's not how, the, that's not what they were doing, dumbass. 
<laughs> We're being pretty pro China today, are we? Yes, I am super pro China. That uh <laughs> that I have to correct people uh that think that you know, China was just like lining up people with COVID and like executing them in front of a wall or some shit. Isn't that a fire hazard? It of course is a fucking fire hazard. It's China, motherfucker. They don't have that. They don't have fucking shit like that. I mean, they do, but they don't really follow uh, the 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 zoning and ordinance violations that we do here in the United States is part of the reason why they can like literally fucking build roads like that. You're fucking embarrassing, dude. LMFAO. When you have no argument, just fucking toss in an LMFAO so that, you know, you can come across like you're above it. Yo, I fucking got you, bro. You so dumb. I'm clever, dude. Yeah, I I'll get back to you on a counter, but fuck, dude, you're bad. Fucking owned. <sighs> anyway, Let's finish this Joe Rogan video, but before we do that, it's the second time we're going to do this today. It's top of the hour every hour, six second ad break. Um, it's time, folks. It's top of the hour every hour, or is it a six second ad break? If you no longer want to see the ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do it for $5 or for free with your Twitch Prime. Here it is, folks. Here the fuck it is. Why is Joe Rogan dressed like a baked potato? Because he is a baked for potato. For so many people. They, any theory that you had, if Trump was like anti-China, you couldn't say anything that possibly would connect China to making a mistake that caused this virus to be released. You, you would be a part of, you'd be alt-right. Catch new episodes of the... Damn, that's a good, that was a good line to wait, uh, to, en to end it on. Yeah. Yeah, liberals are definitely uh, scaling back on their anti-Chinese rhetoric because of Donald Trump. Oh, wait, no, they're not. We literally watched the uh, R Democratic Party try to fucking... try to fucking outdo the Republicans on how much uh, they hate China more. So, you know, that's completely false. I used to really like Joe when he was just a comedian. Once he had Alex Jones, Tim Dillon, and Ben Sharpie on, I had to stop melting my brain. The funny thing is, like, I still, I still love Joe Rogan. Like, I, I do. I love Joe Rogan. I, I think he's uh, very entertaining. I think his podcast is great. I will go so far as to even say that I like his comedy. I think his comedy specials are not as bad as some other people make it seem like. Um, but having said that, he is a fucking ape. He is a self-described ape and he is undeniably an ape. Cab, you're just trying to get on a show. Let's be fucking real. First of all, I've known about Joe Rogan and have been a fan of Joe Rogan and have met Joe Rogan since before you were even fucking born. So suck my dick. Don't make me pull out the fucking Instagram. Don't make me pull out the Instagram photo. So that's one. Two, uh, I will never be able to go on the Joe Rogan show regardless of my bona fides because of how much I've said uh, that he's an ape and he has like terrible fucking uh, takes on certain issues. 
And he's not the type of dude who likes having people who fucking shit on him aggressively on his show. You met Joe Rogan? Yeah, I've... Joe Rogan used to be a huge fan of the Young Turks. So, and uh, was a huge fan of Anna and me, Anna, and Anna's husband literally went and watched his special. He invited us to watch his, like, uh, not his special. He invited us to go watch him uh, test out his material for one of his specials. And then we hung out for, like, three hours after it. Like, I, it was way back in the day. July 3rd, 2014. There it is. That's the photo. And not only, not only am I a, a fan of Joe Rogan, but like, I, this is embarrassing to admit, but like Joe Rogan has been <clears throat> influential in my development as well, because uh, what he did with uh, his influence that he had, with the money that he had, was something that I always wanted to do. And I've been able to do now because of Twitch. I always loved that he was like, I have a lot of money from fucking uh, the UFC and from... Uh, whatever the stupid show that he had where people ate scorpions and stuff. And he, oh, Fear Factor. And he took that money and instead of like uh, going uh, even more Hollywood route, he was like, I'm going to make something of my own. I am going to use the influence that I have to make, to, to make people listen to me on my own platform. And when I was younger, that was a big deal for me. I, I saw a person... Uh, develop his own autonomy and and this was before i mean this was before he started like having people like milo Yiannopoulos and shit on you know what i mean like and then in the beginning stages of the alt-right like he did a huge fucking he did a huge favor to that far-right movement by literally fucking building careers for all of these dipshits found you from a clip you roasting joe rogan that went viral Holy shit, your uncle's pretty connected. That's not my uncle. That was fucking Anna. Joe does not like Jank. Sam, Sam Harris ruined that relationship. Sam Harris was instrumental in... Uh, breaking that uh, or burning that bridge between Jank and Joe because uh, Joe is ape brained and super susceptible to pseudo intellectual rhetoric, and Sam Harris has that locked down. So, uh, ape brain Joe was like, Oh, well, yeah, this guy he's smart and he's saying stuff about Islamophobia that I agree with. Like, I mean, that's crazy, you know, uh, tickled his uh, biases against Muslims and shit. And uh, that, that like big argument between Sam and, and Jank kind of uh, further created a rift between the left and progressive spaces on the internet that originally were aligned uh, and the, it created like a r slash atheist uh, Islamophobic uh, subsect that then literally turned to like Dave Rubin and shit and some of those guys actually became like right wingers, you know? You think someone who ran on Republicans are evil and what I will do whatever I can to destroy them, implement things like universal health care, be successful? Are liberals too obsessed with civility politics? I think liberals are uh, obsessed with civility politics, yes. Okay. Representative uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, everyone's favorite woman lit, uh, repeatedly indicated support for executing prominent Democratic politicians in 2018 and 2019 before being elected to the Congress. A CNN K file review of hundreds of posts and comments from Green's Facebook page shows. Of course she did. You want to know why? Because she's fucking QAnon. And hey, guess what? This is what QAnon is. No matter which way you cut it, this is literally what QAnon supporters believe. Okay? So if you are QAnon, and if you believe in QAnon, then of course you believe in executing Democratic politicians. Because that's what QAnon is. A day of reckoning coming inevitably where the end game is democratic politicians and republicans who have stood in opposition to donald trump get executed for their crimes against humanity that's literally what they believe in 
So it is not shocking that she said this shit. Anyway, I'm going to move on to this. I want to watch this Vice documentary on QAnon instead because uh, they did a fucking fat one and I'm even in it. So QAnon is the single greatest information operation in the history of humanity. Our kids are not for sale. You know, currency of the elite basically is babies. Drinking children's blood, adrenal chrome. This stuff has been going on. Where we go on, we go all. There was a new phenomenon this week, something called QAnon. What exactly is QAnon and why is it making headlines now? On Saturday, October 28th, 2017, an anonymous post on the message board Calm Before the Storm on 4chan, 4chan, which is an anonymous online message board, claimed the arrest of Hillary Clinton was scheduled for the following Monday. The anonymous user claimed to be a high-level government insider. But the funniest part about this is that, like, it's like, that never happened. You know what I mean? Like, the first ever lie that they told also never happened. There has never been a thing that happened that Q and I was able to predict. Find the post only Q, a nod to Q level security clearance granted by the Department of Energy. An army of digital soldiers quickly began to research the questions that digital Q posed. Digital soldiers. Here we go, we go, we go. God bless America. And Trump began retweeting accounts associated with Q. Our president just gave the most damning Q proof ever. The president condemns and denounces any group that would incite violence. This is a militant group. There's been two murders tied to this group this year alone. QAnon is a military operation. That's why they're not allowed to talk about it. As Q supporters started running for- That's the funniest QAnon murder, by the way, which is a very weird thing to say in and of itself. But like, once you find out what I'm talking about, it's pretty funny. That fucking mobster guy that got executed by some like psycho QAnon dude. It is so wild that like, my dude survived the fucking treacherous mob. Like, the ranks of the New York mob. And then got murdered by some fucking psycho. Who thought that uh, he, was, he was executing pedophiles. For Congress, and headlines about Q invaded everyone's social media feeds. Millions around the globe began asking their family and friends. What, what is, is QAnon? QAnon? Not climate change. We have an army of digital soldiers. You're dealing with one of the most experienced spies. Of course, Hasanabi is defending a fucking mobster. Wait, I, wait, what do you mean? I just said it's funny that he got executed by a QAnon supporter. Like, w what part of that seems like a, like a defense of a fucking mobster, dude? I'm so confused, dude. Yeah, he, he, this guy, Anthony Camello, executed a Gambino mob boss. Okay? It is one of the most high profile mob killings in decades. That was, for the longest time, that was like the only kill that the QAnon people had. It's so crazy, dude. It's so fucking nuts, dude. Anyway, let's keep going. Sorry. You're ever gonna meet. It was meant to be kind of like a big joke. It's called QAnon, a fringe conspiracy theory that some have likened to an online religion. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much. As long as these drops are still continuing, it matters a lot. I think because who's writing off them? Colorized? Who's having all this influence? What exactly is QAnon, and why is it making headlines now? Where is it? Turn off. Which gate are you in? We're right there. Hi. Can't see my it. Entire oh, life, here it is. I've been a bit of a political nerd. Green so names are back, baby. I've spent my career on campaigns or working on public policy at think tanks in Washington, D.C. Growing up in Israel, I saw what it looks like to be at war with your neighbor. 
I became a filmmaker to tell stories that positively address That's ideological right. divides. Back in 2012, I helped launch a YouTube channel, Soul Pancake. Soul Pancake, where our mission was to make videos that inspire deeper conversations than you can typically find online. After the 2016 election, a friend talked me into quitting my stable job and spending a really weird couple of years making a documentary with him. The active measures? Yeah, no. You've seen it? When Marley came to LA for her film launch, she discovered we were both fascinated by a new phenomenon on the scene. An anonymous figure known as Q connected both of our worlds, the internet and politics. I wanted to know Q's identity, who the person behind the cloak was, because it seemed like a political operation designed to weaponize divisions and foment distrust in institutions. I recognized the same tools of online radicalization that were being used abroad were now being used in America. What I didn't see happening in the coverage around Q was a desire to better understand why Q exists, and as a result, things have become much more hostile. Which is a threat to our national security and democracy as a whole. So in the middle of a pandemic, Bayan and I packed our bags, and headed out to find Q. Nearly everyone has a friend or family member who suddenly began posting about Q in the last few years, and I'm no exception. We're starting in Tampa, Florida, and meeting with Bayan's friend JT to learn how a former Bernie supporter took a turn and has devoted his career to Q. It feels like the perfect starting point to get an understanding of what Q is and how it's attracted so many people. Listen, when you're looking for QAnon, Florida's probably the best place to start, okay? Let's be real. People. They they were crazy before QAnon, and they're gonna be crazy out there after QAnon. Okay, what whatever whatever they got going on there, they should they should test the water while they're down there. Okay, that's what they should be doing, really. Fucking Florida, dude. Jesus Christ. Well, we go one, we go all. I won't push you down. You won't let me fall one day for sure. We will stand tall. Where we go one. <laughs> My friend JT is a talented musician who is inspired by Q's post. Okay, bro, talented? Sure. Posts and started writing music about Q. So I took my hair down. It looks, I mean, <laughs> it looks very majestic. One thing that we connected on early on was that you were a Bernie guy in 15, right? Yes. And the reason why, because he, he, he said, break the establishment. How did you go from Bernie to Trump? Bernie got kicked out of the running. I was furious at Hillary. And then Trump came out. He started saying the things that I liked about Bernie, which was fighting against the establishment. Our movement is about replacing a failed and corrupt. And when I say corrupt, I'm talking about totally corrupt. Political establishment. So how did you find Q? Jordan Sather, who I love, literally probably the two days after Q posted, I saw his feed about it and I'm like, what the heck is this? Q information, all of this is just going to be uh, mainly questions I'm gonna throw out there and thoughts for you guys to ponder. It was so, it's so strategic to like, reel you in, you know? Right. You like they put in a code and you're like, what the hell does that mean? And then you figure out what it means, you go, whoa, they figured out what it means. It's a game. Wait, did he did he rec does he recognize that, that she was crazy now or something? Because he sounds like he's over it. I, I don't know if he's over it or not though, because I can't tell. But it's game with insider information that you can't get from anywhere else. It's like going to college for the deep state. So it wasn't like a moment. It was kind of like gradual and over time that you discovered it, it, it. Listen, anybody that is involved in the Q movement that can't admit it's a PSYOP is too blind to see that it's a PSYOP. Wait, what? It is a PSYOP. What's a PSYOP? It's a psychological operation. A PSYOP or psych- Wait, so he does get it. What, is he reformed? I'm so confused, dude. What the fuck? Psychological operation is usually a military-led strategy to influence a population's emotions, motives, and- Okay, chat, serious question for you. Is it worse? Is it a worse case of brain worms when you know you're getting brain worms uh, tapped into your brain and you still don't care and you still think it's the truth? Or is it better somehow? Like, do you have less brain worms if you know you're getting brain worms and yet you still have it? Or- do you have somehow more brain worms because you recognize it as brain worms and yet you're still allowing it into your home? 
three months. You By home, I mean your fucking uh, brain. brain yes, yeah, self-aware cultist is, is so weird. An objective reasoning. After we finished our interview in the parking lot, I hopped yeah. in the car with JT to catch up. Right after 2016, I was reunited with one of my best friends. We had we started a band. It was my dream to be playing with him again. I had everything lined up and and in the way, you know, I thought that I wanted my career to be and and uh, and then this happened and my eyes were open to something that I knew existed and I couldn't put my finger on it and it gave me an opportunity to uh, start to put my finger on it. In 2018, JT was inspired <laughs> by Q and started writing songs for the movement. Yeah, brother, you the put your finger on some. And um, beginning of 2019, he just said, nah, dude, I can't be, I can't be around that. Unfortunately for JT, his best friend was not as inspired by Q. I had, to, I, of course, I love the guy, I, I honor him. And it was almost like an ultimatum, like I could put it away, I could like say, well, this isn't worth, um, you know, just writing music about all the time. And for some, you know, reason, I, I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to take the hard road where we go one. So that is the same concept uh, that you see within the black pilling that takes place in incel uh, circles and, and a lot of these other circles on the internet as well, where you're like, you have to actively make a choice to leave your friends and family behind because they are the only anchor in your life that have an opportunity to fucking whip you back into a uh, reality, you know, snap you back into reality. So these circles straight up will try to cut today, you just like awful. actual cults because they are operating in a similar fucking uh, capacity. They try to cut you away from your friends and family in an exact same way that cults do so that um, there is no way that you can return. Maybe. Once you make that decision, once you take that leap, and you push yourself away from your friends and family, then the only thing you have, the only source of familiarity that you have is literally this fucking cult, right? Yeah, exactly like uh, Scientology, where you no longer have anything that, uh, that, that symbols the real world, and, and you've now made a choice to be around only other QAnon people, so it makes it so much harder for you to return after that point. We go all. Um, because, well, I'm a rebel <laughs> and yeah, uh, nobody's really going to tell me what dude. to do. We pulled over to eat and JT got an alert on his phone. Hey, what just happened? Yeah, so dude, like uh, Q just posted, says that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln, November 1863, together we win. The question I get from people that don't really know about Q, but just have heard of him is, you know, it does make you wonder why. For those people who are saying kind of like your chat, dude, I literally always fucking recommend you go outside and have friends outside of this community, okay? Don't be ridiculous. They would try so hard to make it sound awful and bad and evil and it's like they thousands of articles thousands of articles written about about it as a d insane and evil and uh extremists conspiracy group whose theories make alien invader claims sound mainstream falsely claim that the world is run by a satanic cabal of elites the bureau warns some of those conspiracy theories will likely motivate some domestic extremists if, if it was all bullshit and it was all fake why would they try so hard to diminish it this is all insane and incoherent it's because they know it isn't. It's real. Yeah, when you're a reactionary and your entire worldview is about being against like liberals or liberal media and, you know, institutional legitimacy and you feel as though liberals are the, the perfect manifestation of institutional legitimacy, then, you know, all of this shit makes sense because, yeah, Chris Hayes, yeah, fuck that guy. He's MSNBC. Fuck that guy. I hate MSNBC. So if they're shitting on something, it must be true. 
you know. What's that fucking take that uh, stupid Nazis always uh, incorrectly attribute? I forget to who, but like, uh, but they, they constantly talk about how, you know, if you want to know who rules society, find out who you cannot criticize. And they, they say it's Voltaire and Nazis say that all the time because they're saying like Jews, you know, they're trying to say, uh, if you want to know who runs society, find out who you can't criticize. And they're talking about Jews. So, uh, of course, what that actually means is, you know, kids with fucking cancer. Okay. Make a wish kids with cancer. That's who rules the society because you can't criticize them. So they, yeah. <laughs> That's how you, that's how you, uh, get to the most idiotic fucking point of view. If your entire worldview is, uh, if your entire worldview revolves around like who your fucking enemies are or who you, uh, can't criticize, I guess, or who is saying that you're crazy, then, you know, I know Voltaire didn't say that, by the way, for the record, I know Voltaire didn't say that. I, that's why I said it, it's incorrectly attributed to Voltaire. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, dude, I just can't wait for a day when we can just sit back and, like, go see football again. To not have to worry if, if, if there's going to be a, a protest on the field. Let them just be the NFL, and if people want to watch it, they watch it. And, um... Well, that's that, akin to, like, you as a, people saying to you as an artist being like, well, you just be, sing songs about booze and women yeah. and money and cars. <laughs> so true. But, like, don't f touch this other stuff because oh, that's not what God. I come to KTL for. Like, oh. <laughs> no, you, no, I, I love your, you. I love I triggered you now. I, no, no, <laughs> but I just, I love that, that, you know, you can... You can make me see something I wasn't seeing, and and um, and we laugh about it, man. And it's you're right. Much love, dude. It was great meeting you guys. While JT was drawn to Q because of political frustrations, and Q's gamified model pulled him in further, we wanted to see how the QAnon conspiracy theories can quickly radicalize everyday Americans. I've said this before, but they've like hobbified and gamified fascism. Like that's it. At the heart of fascism lies this uh, insane conspiracy of an outgroup uh, dominating you, but they're also weak at the same time, and they must be dominated. But they're also all powerful, and that's why they're dominating you, for no reason other than the fact that they're evil and you're good, right? And QAnon has basically turned that into a hobby. Okay, that's it. They they've turned it into a fucking mobile game that uh, your your boomer parents can play on Facebook. It's kind of no different than, uh, what's that game that every fucking, uh, family member was, was, uh, inviting you to play? Like Candy, was it Candy Crush? What was it? Was it Farmville on Facebook? Like, everyone's boomer parents were just, like, nonstop inviting, uh, one another to fucking Farmville and Candy Crush and shit? Yeah, that's basically QAnon now. They moved on from Farmville to QAnon. Coming up after the break. I, I do think that at very high levels, it, it also involves... Holy shit, these guys have fucking commercial breaks, dude. What the hell? Also, weird... Yes. Spot that Q ended on. Satanic rituals. Drinking children's blood. Adrenal formation. To be classified in courage. QAnon is the single greatest information... Op Wait, is there still a... Why is there an ad break in a fucking documentary? Okay, here it is. As a domestic the amount of violence against their political enemies. QAnon, the search for Q, three-part investigative event. There's like a two-minute ad break. Tuesday at 10 on Vice. There is a two-minute ad break of the documentary within the documentary. What the fuck? Bunker times. Bunker this is really where I shine. Let's go over like sort of just QAnon 101. All right, so Q drops are these cryptic posts that come directly from an anonymous figure that goes by Q. The people who read those drops, they're the ones who are referred to as Anons, and that's where the Anon part comes. The most dedicated Anons are known as bakers. So, if you give me an hour of your time, by Told the end you. of this, you'll probably be able to make up your mind whether you think Q is a LARP, is a phony, or whether you think Q is worth paying attention to. And what those bakers do is they take Q's drops, which are also called breadcrumbs, they obsessively research Told it, you that they're and then called they breakers. create content that could be videos, it could be tweets or posts that then interpret it for the general public. Okay, so they're 
The bakers are the people who are wrapping the breadcrumbs together and creating this actual thing. Exactly. That They're putting it in the oven, that. you know. But I will say the OGs, uh, Jordan Thanks Sather, hey, Praying Medic, oh, yeah. In the Matrix, uh, and Dustin Nemos. Yeah, Dustin. And that's just, that's an abbreviated list. Yeah, you know? all right, I don't know if you know this, but Dustin is on the lineup to be at QCon in Jacksonville this weekend. Let's do it. Okay. QAnon's book, An Invitation to the Great Awakening, shot to number one on Amazon's list of bestsellers. The book contains a compilation of unproven radical conspiracy theories suggesting high-ranking Democrats are part of a cult that eats children, claiming the government created AIDS and saying it's also behind the movie Monsters, Inc. Dustin Nemos is a fixture in the Q world. In 2018, he published QAnon, An Invitation to the Great Awakening, making him quite literally the guy who wrote the book on Q. So the fake news has really gone from ignore QAnon to attack. And it's beautiful to see. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they attack you, and then you win. Yeah. We're in the, are we in the victory phase for QAnon? When literally all of the fucking QAnon predictions, including like the, the uh, white hats or, or whatever the fuck it was called, uh, arrested uh, the Democratic politicians? No, it didn't happen. So I guess that's never going to happen. And we are winning. This dude literally looks like a Turkish fucking uh, famous YouTuber Three that I, Thanks, uh, I also Hassan know. Abi. What's his name? Yeah, here. Orkun Shitmak. Holy shit. That's so crazy. Look at this motherfucker. Yo, 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 yo. Kind of looks like him a little bit. I'm not crazy, right? Look at, look at this. What's he been up to, bro? Oh. What are you been up to, Orkun? My friends. Sorry, I know it's tough, but you think it's tough? I can try. Yeah, Maybe. I'm a little sensitive to light because I stay up too late. Yeah, I feel that. Three years of that, man. I don't work out anymore either. I just sit at the computer for like 17 hours a day. Oh my God, that's me are really one of the leaders of the Q movement. Um, people look to you and your opinion. If we could just start with uh, who you are. Can you well, just give I'm, us a rundown of who you are? I, I, uh, honestly, I'm just a, a entrepreneur who started a YouTube channel and that took off and it turned into uh, sort of a surprise career. I mean, I was just covering the news, um, but uh, then I was banned a month before my daughter was born. So here I am with Bill's a, a baby on the way and, and a pregnant wife, and it's like winter, six feet of snow outside. And I'm about to be evicted because of YouTube. Uh, what was the first time that you kind of ran into Q? Christmas Eve 2017, I jumped in. New Q posts going into who and where the pedophiles in government are. <laughs> when I started to see some of the, um, the games that they were playing with Trump's Twitter, for example, that's when I really started to pay attention to it. Um, one famous example, he had a, a 0, 0, 0, 0 second difference on a post that Q and Trump posted at the same time, three times in one day. So there's like a no time at all difference. That was. All right, guys. Sorry. That's sort of our methodology of establishing. Yeah, put is. the fucking Oakleys back on, brother. That's how he drives his power. Dude, here's my... It's funny because, like, through memes, we have created some QAnon-style conspiracies in this community that are all memes. Like, Oakleys is where uh, chuds drive their power from. The more thumb-like you look, the more fucking... Uh, uh, the more of a cop you are, that your cop level is, like, super high, the more you look like a thumb. That's what... All gray names are chuds. Okay, that's uh, true, though. And it, it's great. It, it's all real and true. And that it's the real legitimate cue. Uh, when they asked President Trump to say tip top, tippy top, and he did so on Easter. That's a very specific phrase. And we keep it in tip top shape. We call it sometimes tippy top shape. It's like when we do gamba and, and people, uh, believers win. You know what I mean? It's like Trump's speech patterns are so specific yeah. that three months, like that is not indicative of anything. Like not only that, but because these are anonymous people that are consistently spamming a multitude of different theories, you never know who's the one who is like legitimately coming up with the same uh, concepts over and over again. And you only hear about the ones that do actually pan out as far as predictions goes. And you never hear about the other ones. So again, idiotic. Speaking of the messenger, there have been a lot of theories on who Q is. Sure. Uh, first of all, do you, th do you have your own theory? I have a few. You have a few? Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us? 
I don't want the world to know who Q is because it will probably get the team killed. Okay. Does that change for you if tomorrow's Q drop says that now's the time, everybody get their guns, and we are going to start, take to the streets and hunt these leftists? No. no. I would defend them. You would defend the leftists? Yes. How do you think the rest of the community would respond? I would honestly put forth, without even knowing the numbers, that the Q movement is the most peaceful movement in the history of mankind. Okay. And I think they would look to Trump for sort of clarity on that. To me, what I see is a the most peaceful movement known to mankind where the end point of the movement is literally Democrats getting arrested and being executed. The most peaceful movement of all time that uh, for some weird reason consistently defends Donald Trump. The most peaceful movement of all time that uh, for some weird reason turns Bernie bros into reactionary psychopaths who advocate for everything that the Republican Party believes in. Very weird. A lot of people who actually really do want to converse before we reach this tipping point where we can't anymore. And in a way, I think like this doc is, is an attempt to- We are not staying silent on the panda hat. It is the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen uh, in this entire video. I would rather have him literally say QAnon is real and true than wear that fucking panda hat going forward. No, I saw it. I didn't want to say anything. I held it in. And then I saw someone in the chat also mention it. Yes, I'm, I'm with you, chatter. It is so bad. Do that, you know? Um, I hope so. That would be great. Okay, but you think that Q as a movement will continue to come together post in a post-Trump world? Sure, the need would not have stopped. Kids would still be getting hurt, and, and probably more boldly than ever, because if they had beaten Trump, then they had kind of beaten the great challenge to their rule. So, um, you know, currency of the elite basically is babies. They're, they're trafficking in children and it's used as blackmail with entities like Epstein and Nexium. It's used to control powerful people. Like we know Maxwell and allegedly has uh, tapes on high level US politicians. I, I do think like that, that at very high levels, it, it also involves sort of Thank ritualistic um, practices, some occult stuff. And I think that's, that's probably kind of a mind control thing. You know, imagine eyes wide shut, but with kids. It does carry with it uh, part of a conspiracy that's existed for a very long time. Adrenochrome is a legitimate drug. What is this shit? That stuff? Adrenochrome. Um, it is harvested a specific way, and that is through torture and... Um, and oh, this is very cool. That's a, that's a legitimate real drug, huh? That's interesting. Adrenalization, you know, fear and pain, um, most often from children. Adrenochrome is a chemical compound used in some countries to treat blood clots. It is not harvested using the pain or fear from children. While child trafficking is a real problem, there is no evidence to suggest that elites are torturing children to harvest adrenochrome. So uh, this stuff does happen. Uh, child fear and loathing and uh, uh, fear and loathing and La Las Vegas is now fear mongering in in Tampa, Florida. Trafficking is a big business. You know, multi multi billions of dollars. You can sell drugs once. You can sell guns once. You can sell a child a hundred times a day. Gosh, that's dark. As our camera team was packing up, Dustin made one last comment. Do you happen to know what PANDA stands for in the Q movement? No. no. I didn't think so. Uh, Dustin went on to explain one of the most violent and horrific acts imaginable. It shows how for many who see the world through Q's filter, suddenly the most ordinary things like pizza, hot dogs, and pandas become confirmation of the worst possible assumptions that you can make about someone. Coming up after the break. Fuck you, Wolf. Okay, what are these fucking breaks, brother? Come on. My season premiere Daily Beast. His focus on Q has resulted hey, in him Summer. becoming the target of Q and the Anons. And Angela? Damn, it's kind of fucking... It really shows where my level of brain cancer is because I, I know, like, all the specialists. I guess they are literally specialists that are on this documentary talking credibly about the movement, whether it be the Q Anonymous people or Will Summer, like, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. That's, that's how far back my brain cancer goes as far as like knowing about QAnon. What is Panda? I have no idea what the Panda means. Why didn't he fucking explain to us what the fucking Panda means? I don't know. Panda in the QAnon movement. What does it mean? I'm gonna go to fucking jail for this. Ajahn the demon rat stole my kids and mailed me the adrenochrome. It doesn't say, and I've never heard of it before. 
Uh, it's I can't find it. I'm Googling it and it's not coming up. So I'm just going to keep Paris going. Cone is the president of Media Matters for America, a nonprofit media watchdog that has been tracking Q since its creation. Why is QAnon considered so dangerous? You know, we've always gone out. Bro, this is going to fucking trigger so many QAnon people because like Angelo and all these Media Matters folks are immediately George Soros, okay? George Soros funds Media Matters, it's over. Uh, that's like, anyone who sees it is going to be like, oh, of course, it's George Soros confirming my suspicions. After the riot, we've you know had death threats before and other sorts of things. Um, this has been different. You know, we've had to have security at the office during periods of time because of the amount of threats that have happened. It's harder to, I think, ensure the safety of staff. They go after us and they use the same tactics that they use on people every day. Doxing, harassment, trolling. Doxing is, you know, they will pull private information and post about it online. You know, not that long ago, somebody doxed my sister and my niece. I hear, you know, several times a week, I would say, from people who have lost their families to QAnon or have lost a husband or a, a son or a mother. And these Wait, are- what? From pressure being sodomized to call panda eyes or cum panda? What? Sick child with neuroblastoma and saying its eyes are black from pressure being sodomized, which they call panda eyes. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Okay, I did, yeah. Yeah, now I know why they didn't fucking talk about it, dude. Let's continue. Dude, here's the, here's the fucking psychotic thing. They are so... In a weird way, they trivialize such horrific acts. Like, they're literally thinking these, like, psychotic things that maybe one person on the planet has done because it's such a horrific act of violence and cruelty that, like, it's... It's not even something that a normal person with a normal brain would ever even think would, would be happening. Do you understand? There are often people who, you know, they go on Facebook, you know, in March when the pandemic's starting and suddenly they see all this QAnon stuff and they just fall headfirst into it. A lot of it is tied into the same actions and behaviors that makes them deeply connected to QAnon. You are doing your own research, you're investigating, you're deciphering clues, you're invested yep. in the idea in a different way than just, say, believing a conspiracy theory. It's a lot harder to disentangle somebody from that. Should Q be classified as a domestic terrorism threat? QAnon, we know in one case, has already inspired domestic terrorism in the case of the, the Hoover Dam ar armored oh, truck yeah, situation. Oh, yeah, that was a... You know that there's a man on the bridge with a gun? In 2018, a man blocked the entrance to the Hoover Dam in an armored truck with a sign that said, release the OIG report. They were convinced, based off of all this chatter and the Q threads, that inside this report, finally, all of the prime people within the deep state that were running this child sex trafficking conspiracy would be exposed. I think with QAnon, it certainly sort of... it can. By the way... I, I, I must rescind my previous statement that, that the panda hat is the worst thing that we've seen so far on the stream. I take it back. The panda thing that we learned afterwards is actually worse than that. So, sorry. That hat remains. The other thing is uh, way worse. I don't want to even mention it again. Give a sort of force for these people who are already disturbed. Bucky Wolf out, out, out in the Pacific Northwest. This was a young man who was very troubled, got into QAnon, and he allegedly killed his brother with a samurai sword um, because he was convinced he was a lizard. Stating, I will dash you lizards to pieces like pottery. Bucky Wolf was a young man who fell down the Q rabbit hole and became convinced Donald Trump was communicating with him through coded messages on the Q boards. Anthony Camello is another QAnon-related crime. 24-year-old Anthony Camello was taken into custody. He basically just falls down the QAnon hole, like so many people have before. And he decides that, uh, you know, he's going to go citizen's arrest the head of a mafia family. And so he figures out where this guy lives, and he rolls up, you know, allegedly, and slams into the guy's truck and shoots him. Damn kind of hot. And then Camello gets in court, and he holds up his hand, and he's drawn a Q on it. And, I mean, people were stunned. There's a few major narratives and themes, but they always weave it back to this idea of this massive operation of child sex trafficking. And the reason why all of these Democrats and the media and deep state are running these child sex trafficking rings is because they're demons feeding off of these children. We're talking about people in banking in Hollywood were drinking children's blood. So th this is playing on some kind of like classic anti-Semitic tropes. I mean, George Soros looms very large in QAnon. 
which means they're not human, they're otherworldly. That, to me, is what makes it dangerous. It's a call to arms centered around an idea that the people who should be in some way 